team. Georgia State, a very potent offensive team. They can light it up. They shot 60% in some of their conference tournament games, but they face perhaps the ultimate defensive squad in Wisconsin, which wants to play a completely different tempo. Highlights now to Boise of the first game. You can see the Daryl Cooper, the off-balance three. Foul by Roy Boone. The free throw is good. Suddenly, it's a one-point game. Then the steal. Shenard Long in transition, knocks the shot down. The Georgetown transfer gets it to go. This is what we talked about earlier. Vershaw inside, he's fouled. Wisconsin down one, three seconds to go. And Vershaw, normally very reliable on the line, misses a pair of free throws. A heartbreaking end to the seniors' careers at Wisconsin. And Georgia State gets win number 29 to move on. Vershaw shoots 73% going into the tournament. He's seven for nine today but he throws two rim shots, and that's why uh, they go down with that. Ugliest basketball games ever televised, the second lowest scoring game since they put the shot clock in on that Colonial Final. They won in the 30s. Well, Maryland obviously wants to push the ball. George Mason says, hey, we don't play in the 30s either. We're athletic. We like to play up-tempo, and they took this game right down to the wire. You see George Mason down by one. George Evans, the 30-year-old veteran of the Gulf War, Puts it back, puts George Mason up one, and then Steve Blake. This was the shot of the game right here, just inside of a minute to go, knocking down the triple. He's had a history of doing that. He said that game until overtime uh, or made that big shot. Remember the three against Duke? Georgia Tech. This is an anticipated 8-9 matchup. Marvin O'Connor, the streaky scorer for the Hawks, knocks down the triple. St. Joe's up by seven. O'Connor streaking with 21 points. Later, it's a five-point game. Tony Akins. He would get it going after a slow start. He got in foul trouble. He draws Tech back within three. And Jameer Nelson, the fabulous freshman. Dick says he's the best freshman in the country. Two of his 13. And St. Joseph's has to sweat it down the end. Hey, for the they did one 18 in a row coming in. And the, they beat St. John. The Pride had the lead in this game. But then you can see UCLA, the strength inside Gad Zurich. They really had no answer for him. UCLA up by one. They begin to pull away here. Capono kicks to Billy Knight and knocks down the triple. And UCLA wearing him down on defense. This was a game effort by the squad, formerly known as the Flying Dutchman. But you're not going to be able to match that inside. Get Zurich to put tough, back. Tough in the paint. That's where they beat him up at the end. 39 to 6 points in the paint. But carried it. Capona, as well as Billy Knight, who had two seed against 15 seed Holy Cross, champs of the Patriot League, a defensive oriented team. And they had the lead on Kentucky before Tayshawn Prince hit a couple of huge threes. Buries that one. Kentucky would take a three-point lead. Setko knocks down a triple. Willard's team back within three at 68-65. In the final 30 seconds, look at Prince. It was Tayshawn Prince time, baby. Tayshawn Prince time. Oh, it goes in. That is the iron kind. And it goes down, and Kentucky survives. 82-78. Prince, 27 points, 10 of 17. He had 12 of Kentucky's final 14 points, but still in a losing effort. Former Western Kentucky coach and Kentucky assistant Ralph Willard. Iowa actually the underdog in this game, even though they were the higher seed, trying to avoid a total collapse by the Big Ten on afternoon one of this NCAA tournament. Creighton, a very tough team. They're certainly not happy to just be in this tournament. They came expecting a win here. Luke Rucker once again looks like he's got to sit this tournament out. Finishing inside quickly for Creighton. They had a 10-point lead. Then Dean Oliver brings it up, takes it all the way for the hanging layup from the Hawkeyes. Make a run midway second half. Iowa, strong last 10 minutes of this game. Oliver was key, he finds. Reggie Evans, who had a very slow start with foul trouble in this game, he would finally get going. This game, again, much closer than the final score. Johnson, in this case here, it's a six versus 11. Kevin Morris driving the length of the floor, and right before the buzzer hits that, Georgia State down 11 at the half. Now second half, Wisconsin's up five. Daryl Cooper off balance, plus he's fouled, made the free throw. A one-point game, under 20 seconds to go. Cooper rips it off, passes ahead. Chenard Long in transition, and he's going to the rack, puts that thing up and in. Georgia State up by one, five seconds to go. Mark Rashaw sort of got fouled, goes to the line for two. The first, no B! And he missed the shot, it was just short. Second free throw for the tie. Both. Off the back end this time, bounces around, and Georgia State a winner, 50 to 49 against Wisconsin. Georgia State held to a season low 50, but that was the minimum needed to get the first ever tournament win for the school. The Panthers have won eight straight now, 14 out of 15. Lefties three and one, and four openers with new schools in the tournament. 15th seeded George Mason. 35 seconds to go. Mason down four. Eric Herring, you betcha, but he missed the free throw. 
So they're still down two. After Maryland missed two free throws, Mason's next possession. Tremaine Price tried to get it to their big guy, George Evans, but no, through his legs. Mason would foul. Terps hit both free throws. Down three. Here's Mason's last chance. Price brings it up. Looks like he had time to get a better shot, but no. Off the rim and no. And Gary Williams sweating this one out. And the Terps survive and win. That would have busted a lot of brackets. 83 to 80 is your final score. Juan Dixon, 22. He's at a the Aggies of Utah State, though, hardly seem like the team ready to do it this year. Winless in the NCAA since the Richard Nixon administration. And usually it's travel that kills them. Hour and a half bus ride to Salt Lake from Logan, Utah. Then a commercial flight with layovers to wherever. This year, Aggies traveling in style. Chartering from Logan all the way to Greensboro, North Carolina, and the East Regional. Taking on Ohio State under 10 seconds left. Utah State down two. Tony Brown hits the floater. He had 17. Brand new ball game tied at 17. Ohio State with a chance to win it in regulation. Brian Brown, length of the court, three to win. Doy! Off the rim, we're going to overtime. In OT, here come the Aggies. Curtis Bob, loose ball, picks it up. Bad, he's fouled. Three point play. Oh, throw me a bone. Aggies up three. Moments later, Sean Daniels with the steal. My man Bob, finish. Bob with eight points in overtime, and Utah State finally wins their first NCAA tournament game. Missouri in this game. They just wow. didn't show up, but they would rally, and Rashad Wright knocks down the three in the final 30 seconds. 11 zip run ties the game at 68. Now, Clarence Gilbert in the corner for the win. Gets it to go, and Missouri, one of several buzzer beaters tonight, survives and advances 70 to 68. And that means that Krzyzewski and Snyder, the pupil against the mentor. What matchups? Williams versus Mr. Drizel. Give Jimmy Herrick credit. They came back we're up one at halftime, but then Gilbert and Rush in the first half, four for 15 until they took it over second half. Obviously, Gilbert shot at the buzzer real big. Big win for Mizzou to move on team that won the Mid-Continent Conference. This is the team that unseated Valparaiso, the perennial champ of that conference, and they gave the Big East champs all they wanted. Here's Xavier Singletary knocking down a three-pointer, untied the game in the final minute. Last chance for Southern Utah. They get a good look for Justin Sott, but he cannot get the shot to go at the buzzer. That would have forced overtime. Boston College survives, eighth straight win. But it wasn't easy. The three seeds each won by three points today. I'm here watching the lane. Burt drives for Georgetown. Does he beat the clock? Does he snap the tie? The officials initially counted it good. They have to pick the replay. And guys, it cannot get closer than this. No, this is perfect. And the referees looked at it. It was the right call. Great drive to the basket. The Hoyas get it done. Hey, 18 offensive rebounds for 16 points. That's how they got it done is getting points against Arkansas when they needed it down the stretch. This game, the two-seed Iowa State against 15-seed Hampton out of the MIA. Wow. Harvest Williams wow. with seven footer for the lay-in. Wow. Look at this. Here's the rush. Jamal Tinsley. Tinsley. Oh. Tinsley to the man. But Harvest Williams, the seven-footer, was there to kind of alter the shot. The layup was missed. Look at the coach there. Upset City, look at the dance. Steve He's like Barishnikov. Look at him going wild. Oh, look at him having so much fun. And Williams had four fouls with 13 minutes left in this game. They left them in to get it done. Big one. But I'll say this. I really only one point guard on the roster and when Tom Coverdale got in trouble against Kent State in that game it was trouble for Mike Davis's team Coverdale called for the foul here he'll receive a technical foul he said he didn't do anything but he gets teed up that's his fifth foul he fouls out after he left the game uh, Indiana just collapsed here Kent State rallies and Trevor Huffman took over this is the kid not really recruited by Big Ten schools even they grew up in Michigan gets the runner to go Kent State State takes the lead. Huffman with 24. Then Andrew Mitchell dribbles behind his back, knocks down the open jumper. And Mike Davis's Hoosiers knocked out by Kent State. Huffman had 11 or final 50. It to four points here as Zach Gore misses by Casey Calvary at a big second half, throws it down, 54-50 Bulldogs. And then Gonzaga guard Alex Hernandez drains the three from the perimeter, Bulldogs up, but it came down to this in the final seconds. 17 seconds to go. I think you want to be aggressive with the ball right here, go towards the basket. And it's Dickel off penetration, blocked underneath. Cavalry got it to go with nine seconds left. A terrific follow, just tracked the basketball all the way. And Mason Jr. has to go quickly also. Gonzaga up one, Virginia ball, Mason to the rim, upstairs, knocked away, it's over. Forget about Cinderella. Gonzaga once again has proven they are legit. 
So Gonzaga, 24 and 6 on the regular season, a one point win over Virginia. Their action down to the Louisiana Superdome, and the Owls win it by a score of 79 to 65. Quincy Wadley, watch this. End of the first half, off balance, throws it up, goes down. Temple leads at halftime 41 22. Texas was playing catch up all game long. Chris Owens trying to help their cause. Good spin move, but they're still down 17 in the second half. And then Temple guard Lynn Greer drives the lane as Texas was mounting a comeback. Big basket, the hoop and the foul, and Temple goes on the win by 14. They tried the comeback. It really didn't materialize much of anything. Temple wins at 79-65. They'll play the winner of Florida Western Kentucky. Meanwhile, in Kansas City, Butler jumped on top early, held on, and beat Wake Forest 79-63. Thomas Jackson will take the cross-court pass. Pump fake, hit the shot off the glass. Bulldogs led big early on. It was all Butler all day long. Laval Jordan goes right past Wake Forest defenders for the layup and the foul, 48-21 Bulldogs. And then Thomas Jackson drives to the middle of the lane, gets defense coming his way, dishes for Scott Robish, his layup gives Butler a 56-36 lead, and from there, Butler went on to win it 79 to 63. They will play the winner of Arizona against Eastern Illinois. And first round game in the Midwest in Dayton found Illinois all over Northwestern State today. Watch Sergio McLean go down with a deep bruise of the shin. X-rays were negative. He did not return to action today. That was Bill Self's decision. Well, his teammate said, we can handle it from here, Sergio. We'll see you Sunday. Frank Williams, a nice flip to Brian Cook. Two of his 15 right there. Actually, that was Marcus Griffin for the throwdown. And then the Illini move the ball down court. Three quick passes and Griffin jams. Griffin had 16 points and six rebounds. This year, shipped out of the West, where they made their runs each of the last two years, having to go to Memphis, take on a Virginia team that really was suffering kind of a, a crisis of confidence down the stretch this season. But Donald Hand to Roger Mason Jr., no shortage of confidence there. Hand a good job distributing. Mason was on fire. The Cavs up by one. But J.C. Mathis, the freshman on the line, misses the front end of a one and one. The Zags are alive. Down one. The drive by Dickow. Adam Hall with the block, but Casey Calvary there for the putback. Virginia now one last chance on the drive. Mason can't get it to go, and Gonzaga knocks out Virginia. Calvary, the hero, after really hurting his team with some missed free throws down the stretch, gets the game winner. Yeah, but Gonzaga jumps out to a 19-8 start. Virginia came back in the second half, tied it at 50-50, but you got to credit Dick Cal. He did an unbelievable job getting it done, and Casey Calgary ends up in the second half. Total of 16 points, 15 rebounds, and he was the difference getting it on the boards. The Sooners, again, had a lead. The Sycamores chipped away. And we'll pick it up now at the end of the game in overtime right now. You see four seconds to go. Here's the push. Nolan Johnson drives down two. This to force double overtime. And the iron unkind, as someone we know likes to say, kind for the Sycamores who do move on. John Chaney upset that the A-10 gets no credit. The end of the half, watch the shot by Quincy Wadley. Ooh, that sums up the first 20 minutes. He was unconscious. 20 points in the first half. When he's shooting perimeter shots, Temple is awfully tough because they continue to baffle teams with that defense. Then, when Texas was trying to make a run in the second half, Lynn Greer drives, hits the floater. He had 19. Texas never really able to climb back into this game. They shoot 39%. And Western Kentucky, you recall the Gators, the last couple of years have had some real scares in the first round. Butler really had them beat a year ago. Gators got off the hook and ended up winning it in overtime. This is against Western Kentucky. You can see on the break there, the layup is rolled in by a major Parker. The Gators in a tight battle against Western Kentucky. They really couldn't shake him. Brett Nelson, the love fake, goes in, gets the tough shot with the defender right on him. Finally, the Gators beginning to pull away. This was not easy, though, to get the 12-point win to move. Today, a very quick reality check right back there in Dayton against the top seed of the line. This was a first-round knockout, much like the Duke game last night. Frank Williams makes the steal. An opening minute there behind the back to Marcus Griffin. It was a very quick 10-zip Illini lead. No look over the head pass. Griffin had 16 points. Illinois would romp the one concern. Sergio McClain left the game with a bruised right shin. McClain has had persistent ankle problems. Could regroup and get the chemistry back. But against Charlotte, now a tough matchup for the 49ers. Diego Guevara knocks down the three. Bobby Lutz's team goes up by nine, but the balls would rally. Down by three, final minute. Tony Harris pulls up. 
Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Ugly three. Harris, wow. a career 29% shooter in the postseason. A dismal and disappointing game. Oaks and Butler said they had waited 364 days for a chance to atone for letting that game slip away in round one last year against Florida. Some missed free throws. Mike Miller's heroics and Butler went home very disappointed. They took it out on Wake Forest today. This was absolutely unbelievable. Rylan Hangey knocks down the three. He had 15 as the Bulldogs made six of seven threes in the first half. This is the story for Wake Forest. Miss, miss, miss. Look at that score. That is not a typo in the graphic down there. One of the most dismal performances in NCAA tournament history. This was a halftime score. 43-10 at halftime. Not much happened in the second half. Wake Forest kind of made it more respectable looking, but they were never in this game after the first five or six minutes. Absolutely stunning. All right, now to Arizona against Eastern Illinois. This was uh, what you might expect. The Wildcats, many people's pick to win the national championship as a two seed in the Midwest, taking on Eastern Illinois. And it's Lauren Woods who got off to a very fast start, making a block. Jason Gardner, much too speedy for Eastern Illinois. And then Richard Jefferson elevating for the dunk. This was a tour de force performance athletically for Arizona. Woods, he was strong today. Nice little touch pass inside to Michael Wright with a finish, 101-76. Zona won last year's first round game by 24. This year they win it by 25. Richard Canyon always tough in the tournament. And he had Demetrius Porter going for him. Some fancy dribbling. And Demetrius straight to the rack. He had a career high 27. Bulldogs up 11. Then Tito Maddox. Sweet dish to Melvin Eli, the WAC player of the year. And Fresno State wins this one 82-70. Eli with 21 and 13 boards. Don't bet against Tark in the first round. He's now 17-1 in the first round of the NCAA tourney. 15 points, second half, UNC in total control. Forte, oh yeah, behind his back and lays it in with a finger roll. And the Tar Heels go on to win this one. It's 70-48. to The Heels jumped out to an 8-0 lead, which grew to 36-16 at the half. Said John Thompson of Sun and Princeton head coach John Thompson III's dilemma, quote, it was gut-wrenching to sit here and watch. The Heels are now 5-0 all-time in tourney games at the Superdome, where the Heels won titles in 82 and, of course, 93. Doherty on that 82 team, but impressed with this. Game Providence in Penn State, tie game in half. John Crispin going coast to coast, sea to shining sea. Penn State up seven after the foul shot. The pyramid lousy with Crispins. There's Joe to Jossie Kleinhurst for the jam, and Penn State wins this one 69-59. Kleinhurst at 16 and 10 boards. The Knicks. Notre Dame and Xavier, a battle of two Midwestern Catholic schools boasting talented big men in Troy Murphy and David West. Vegas had this as a pick'em game. If you're looking for an edge, consider this. The game started after 10 p.m. Eastern, making a Saturday morning finish likely. Saturday, of course, is St. Patty's Day, when the luck of the Irish flows the strongest. Leprechaun alert. Let's get to Kansas City. End of the first half, Irish by 12. Matt Carroll. Beating some buzzer right there. Mike Bray all fired up. Irish by 14 at the half. They didn't need leprechauns on this night. Beating the press. Carroll going to find Ryan Humphrey all alone. This is fun. Yeah, the reverse. Humphrey with 15. Even the leprechaun getting into the act. The slam. And the Irish win this one 83-71. It's their first NCAA tourney win since 89. David Graves with 27 of 7 from the floor. The Irish shot 63% from the field. We had heard so much from the so-called experts that picking us to lose or not picking us that I think that was motivation enough. You know, after we left the pregame meal, you know, I just I usually get them together about 530. I got them together. I said, well, I've been watching games all day today, and uh, I still don't see anybody picking us. And, yeah, you're right. You know, so... Uh, I think that was enough fuel throughout the week, you know, them hearing, you know, that we probably wouldn't make it past the first round. 14 seed and much respected Iona tangling with the three seed Ole Miss. This a proverbial barn burner. Ole Miss's Emmanuel weighed a long three, and that ties us at 79 seconds to go in the game. Courtney Fields, but Lockhart says, if you don't eat your meat, how can you have any pudding? He is stripped. Iona comes up short, 72-70. The Gales remain winless at the dam since 1980. 
These two teams were close in darn near everything but seeding. Ole Miss shot 44% to Iona's 41, sank 14 free throws to Iona's 13, out-rebounded the Gales by a mere 40 to 36 margin. As far as cool under pressure, though, just throwing it up, and Damone Brown throwing it down. He had 20 and 10 boards, accused by six at the half. Preston Shumpert loves that baseline. Sweet stroke. He had 18 cues by 13. And then Brown going to drive and find Queth Dwayne. Yeah. Jimmy Beheim picking up career win number 600 as Syracuse takes it 79 69. The Orange shot 52% in this one. The Rainbow Warriors had.